Hello and welcome to Mouse House Plus, where we're covering all of the episodes of Loki Season 1 and beyond. Cannot wait for the beyond. But I am Hank. And I am John. And we're your hosts. And we're going to have a ton of fun, including starting out with some feedback we got from Episode 1. So we're going to push this in right off the bat, and then we'll get right into the recap. All right. It says, loved the podcast you guys did. We'll eagerly listen to more. Here's my two cents on the first episode, which I would rate a 10, or I'd go higher if I could. It'd be a 15. See? I I, I said that. (laughs) So I am personally of the opinion that the TVA is the real villain here. Any kind of individual individuality gets stomped on and crushed. In Miss Minutes' little movie, everything is preordained, set in stone. What about free will? I am so waiting and hoping for Loki to burn that place to the ground. Free Mobius from his desk job servitude and go explore the universe together. <laughs> I love those two. Their romance is the best I've seen since, well... Probably Starsky and Hutch back in the 70s. Yes, I am that old. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, I remember Starsky and Hutch a little bit, like watching it with my parents, but not too familiar with it. Uh, Loved the way Loki's cocky arrogance was stripped away from him, and he was forced to see how his mother's death was indirectly caused by his directing the Dark Elf up the stairs to the left. Oof. And seeing his father tell him he loved him and then die, and seeing Thor mourn him. Loki seeing his own death was chilling. I really loved the way Mobius acted as if he was Loki's therapist. It sets Mobius up as someone who really knows Loki, but still, Loki is all about free will. Mischief, rebelliousness, treachery. As we saw when he stole the device from Mobius and then grabbed Hunter B-15, uh, took the collar off himself only to put it on her. So we shall see if Mobi- Mobius naivety lasts where Loki is concerned. I will say that Loki's facial expression as he played with that device was priceless. Almost my favorite part of the show, but I also loved seeing Loki. Uh, I also love that Loki seeing those Infinity Stones were basically useless, as was the Tesseract. And that they were used as paperweights. And I want to see more of Casey. I loved him. Suffice it to say, I really enjoyed your podcast and look forward to listening to your review of Episode 2. Thank you so much. And that is Maggie. Thank you. First time, I believe. Yep. So glad to hear it. And uh, we we love hearing from everyone. Yes. Thank you, Maggie. Thank you very much for uh, sending that in. Hey, I know her, by the way. That's cool. (laughs) Fourth wall. (laughs) That's right. Let's uh, get into the variant episode two of season one. Oshkosh, Wisconsin, 1985. I'm holding out for a hero, John. I I was excited about this, them throwing this song, but uh, this entire, like, uh, going back to the Renaissance Festival, I was sitting there, like, looking, I'm like, are we? No, they can't. They couldn't have done that. The Renaissance Festival has never even really truly existed like that. And then then I saw the one, like, woman in jeans, like, doing the ribbon thing, and she just didn't really, like, care to be there. And I'm like, never mind. I know exactly what's going on here. That is awesome. What is amazing to me is they just walk around. Because at first, in the first episode, I was like, oh, the people can't see them. Oh, yep, they can. But they just walk around like they don't care. Like, we, you guys are de- doomed. And they just walk around and do whatever they're going to do. It's insane to me now, how they do th- that. This spot is also supposed to be a, a key place from Marvel's past. Um, I it's it mentions a bunch of people, um, but it's more along the lines like uh, some a lot of the writers for uh, uh, Marvel and whatnot are are actually from this spa- this place. Oh, cool! Very cool. I mean, this everybody. 
this show is nothing but Easter eggs and it is riddled all over the place. So it's, we're, I'm going to be popping up all the time here with, uh, with something else coming up. All right. So, okay. Great. Uh, C20. That's our TVA agent that gets turned and then takes some of the other TVA agents out. And then the Loki variant, our Loki, or excuse me, the Loki variant that we'll meet later, uh, kills the rest of them and drags C20 through a portal. I was like, this is awesome. But I already knew because it kept the hood up what our Loki variant was going to look like. Uh, I mean, I I knew just because uh, it wasn't even rumor revealed. Just somehow, I just knew it was going to be Lady Loki. It was probably in some sort of conversation somewhere. But I mean, shoot, at this rate, the way that the, the MCU is going, it would it just makes sense for them to do it. Yes. What happens when a Nexus event branches past the red line? Well, Miss Minutes is quick, and she doesn't get smashed with the. Uh, 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 magazine later in the episode, but um, Loki is gonna get a TVA jacket, which is outstanding, man. Uh, do you like his interaction with Miss Minutes? Uh, yes, and I, I like how looking at Miss Minutes, she actually looks more like CGI here than just like a cheesy cartoon. Yeah. I, I just I don't know how it would have felt if it was like a 3D project projection of a cheesy cartoon that would have. That would have just been weird. Um, you know, but uh, no, it, it's interactive. I like how he's like, are you alive? Are you recording me? And he's like, she's like, yeah, a little both. And so, uh, <laughs> I mean, it, it, it's it's some good stuff. Is Miss Minutes the TVA Jarvis? Um, Probably. But hey, Miss Minutes is voiced by the person who does all kinds of stuff in the uh, voice acting realm. Uh, as my kids would like to put it, that she does the voice of Twilight Sparkle from uh, um, My Little Ponies. How uh, Alex would like to know, uh, say it, it's the same person who does the voice of Ahsoka. Yes. So now, so Ming, Ming's got uh, uh, somebody on her tail. It's going to be in multiple different Disney shows. <laughs> they had to make it up to her somehow. Yep. <laughs> B14 put variant in big letters on the back of Loki's jacket, which you know, it's just outstanding. Hey, turn around. Hey, turn around so everybody can see the back of your jacket. <laughs> now, now, hold on a second. Did she do that, or do they just have variant jackets that they hand out? Because he, remember, he pulled that out of a bag. And by the way, he pulls that out of the bag and just throws that bag on the floor while he's walking by the desks. Because I, I was, I was just watching a moment ago and I caught that. I'm like, oh, how rude. <laughs> Think about this though. How many variants get to go out in the field? Probably zero, except for now. Well, enough that they have like a jacket that's sealed somewhere. I don't think so. I, I think she had this made personally so her people could be like, well, if he gets pruned, because <laughs> he's dressed like Mobius for the for the most part with that shirt. He's yeah. the same color shirt, tie and stuff. And then he puts that jacket on and it's like a red shirt, man. I love it. So at this point in time, as they're discussing about all the different Lokis, which I know that you'll, we're going to cover here in a second, uh, but I want to point out that they start talking about like his powers and um, it's echoed. He's basically uh, comparing the his powers that he is able to do with like the Mind Stone and also uh, like with what um, a Scarlet Witch does. I mean, there is per a lot of like side by side comparisons between everything that the Mind Stone can do and what Loki can do. Yeah, there's, that's a great point. The TVA has pruned a ton of Lokis. No two are alike. Now, Loki teaches the TVA a lesson when he was talking about, like, what was he talking about? Projection and duplication, the difference yes. and stuff, which was epic. Did you like some of the different Lokis that we got to see? Well, let's see. We got to see, like, football, uh, quote, soccer um, uh, Loki. We got to see a frost giant Loki, the very first one we saw, that wasn't like a discoloration just because it was a hologram. He has blue skin in that. Like he's supposed and to. Yes, and then uh, we, we also got to see the Viking Loki, which is like that monstrous looking thing. That's a Hulk. <laughs> Lulk. <laughs> but, but, I mean, I'm actually surprised that they didn't show like the variant that we're currently looking at because, I mean, you, you would think that they took pictures of all of them coming in. So Unless they've never caught them. 
Yeah, but I mean, how did this variant end up being a variant? That means that they had to go and get this Loki, and then this Loki decided to bolt, and that's what she's doing is it just kind of going all over the place. I want to see that because I think when he created the branch timeline that then she came in allegedly but she's been at this for a while it looks like so we'll get to that but that wasn't a soccer loki that was a fake tour de france loki tour de france oh sorry i thought it yeah. was world, so, world cup uh, loki do you get it cheating lance armstrong yep you know yep, how yep, they're, yep. <laughs> they're like uh loki likes to cheat <laughs> i was like that was pretty funny to be honest uh, Loki isn't going to get a weapon for this one, but he could get an audience with the timekeepers. And I thought that is a terrible carrot to dangle in front of him because he's going to keep calling you on it, which he does throughout this entire episode. Well, I mean, and I like how later on we get to him where he's like, and what are the time, uh, um, you know, people up to and, and you know, are they all like still hiding their thing? So like nobody there has seen any of the timekeepers at all. Yeah. They just do the work because they think that they're supposed to do the work. So this is going to be right. interesting to see where this goes. It's it's getting that feel of we're off to see the wizard. Yeah, the, mm -hmm. it's getting that feel. Uh, Loki asked the question that I wanted to ask since the beginning, and that is the million dollar question: Why don't you just travel back in time to before the attack and fix this stuff? And they're like, Oh no, we can't. You can't mess with the. You know, I'm like. Here we go. Here's our yeah. first concerning point. Be because what I season. would say is, why can't they show up like the second after it starts to happen? Because as soon as it starts to happen, that's when it's starting to spur off and create a new timeline. So if right. you show up at that moment, you can at least try to catch the person. You might not be able to stop what's going on, but you'll be able to catch the person instead of showing up after all this stuff has been done. I know, I know, I know, I know. Stop. I know we're, we're, we're making sense. Maybe there's a, a different reason that, you know, will make sense later on but for now it doesn't make sense uh he does admit that he missed some of the videos and and then they find out they are three units until red line when loki notices something they don't trust him and they reset the timeline what was he doing there was he legitimately just stalling john yeah, I, th I think so. I think he's just okay. trying to figure some things out, like, you know, other people's goals. Because remember, that's really what he does. Yeah. Uh, so um, there was something on the screen. I'm trying to find it right now. Uh, but I know it's going to be on the bigger screen later on. But uh, I, I do believe that it references the... Uh, hold on a second. I think I got it written down here. Uh, is it... What's the, what's the play? What's the place that the space stone is on? I'm gonna have to look it back up, everyone. I apologize, but uh, anyway, there's on the little screen where it says it's redlining. The line above the red line, there's all these different uh, other timelines that are going on. So um, they're, they're like they're, they put hidden stuff in there. So a lot of the stuff that we know has been happening through the MCU is like going across the top of that. So let me let are, me. Find are you talking it. about the uh, soul stone, or are you talking about another stone? No, the Soul Stone. What, what, Vormir. With, yeah, Vo Vormir. I know one of them is, uh, I think that might have been the one that said something about Vormir, but I'm, I'm okay. going to look it up uh, while we're continuing on. Okay. Because they come up again at the end, too. So we'll have them all. Uh, Movius and Ravana, and that's our Slayer. <laughs> I love that. Uh, discuss the botched mission. She's not happy with him taking Loki on a mission. And then he's never met the Timekeepers. Now, the ink pen says Franklin Delano Roosevelt High School. And he's like, oh, it must be from an analyst you keep on the side. I have two theories. Should I lay them out now or later? Um, Go for it. All right. One, I am starting to think that Rovana is doing stuff on her own. Uh, when he asks about the timekeepers and stuff, she only looks at the center timekeeper. Watch it again. Watch the episode again. And she just looks up at her favorite quote, air quotes. And I, so I think she's doing stuff off book. And then I have another theory. Do you remember when Loki first came in and the guy told him to step through that device? And if you're an Android, you will be disintegrated or whatever. Yes. I think Mobius I think there's a bunch of Mobius clones 
Really? Yes, because she's like another agent or other agents are doing whatever it is to her desk. I think she has other versions of Mobius and they're doing other stuff. And we're going to it's going to be revealed later, I think. That's just what my theory is cuz they're they they're going to inherit his traits, you know, like lo, the Lokis want to give big exposition and they stall. So the Mobiuses will set their drink on the table without a coaster. And I think that's going to come back around because that scene where he's like, well, what if I was one and I didn't know I was? I think they they were foreshadowing this reveal that's going to come. Just a theory and a guess. Okay. All right. Loki tries to explain his actions on the mission, and Mobius plays on Loki's pride. Mobius lays out Loki's plan, which is accurate. And then he's like, I feel bad for the little ice runt, <laughs> which was great. And he's like, pretend your life depends on it, because it pretty much does. Yep. And then Loki mocks their failed attempts and gets sh- shushed, which I thought was priceless. Yeah, Anything the, in that exchange that you really, really liked? Oh, no, just the interaction between him and um, and Agent Mobius. Uh, it's just it it's just funny because it's like they're not serious, but then out of nowhere, all of a sudden, he's like, you know, sh- doing that, exactly that. So, you know, he's saying, shh, and uh, it's, just, it, it's just fun. It's just fun watching the banter. Yes, those two are dynamite together. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can see the three-digit elevator codes. On the side of the buildings as they go up. So we know there's one tier that access is denied. And that's probably where the Wizard of Oz is or whoever's up there. Uh, So I thought that was cool to be able to see like, oh, there's those three-digit codes and here they go up. But we'll find out hopefully in later episodes. Loki wants wants to get files from the creation of the TVA. (laughs) <laughs> and and uh, the beginning of time, uh, but it, instead he gets the destruction of Asgard files and he finds something because he's a private investigator now. And he figures out that the variant is hiding in apocalypse type events. So he takes his freaking food. Here's your salad is Asgard. And then the salt is the Hulk. And what if I push the Hulk off the Rainbow Bridge? <laughs> All that to say that the variant is hiding in those events because whatever you do doesn't matter. Yep. Did you like the uh, poster on the wall that said, please limit breaks to 17 minutes or something like that? <laughs> Uh, I mean, well, there's there's a bunch of stuff here. Okay, first off, um, in the background, you see the number 372, which is on the wall um, of while he's walking around. 372 is the first comic books episode in Thor that uh, featured the TVA. So there's your first Easter egg there. Please have those costumes on that they have on the cover of that. <laughs> the uh, the second one is if you start like looking, doing the breakdown of like everything that he's looking at. So first off, you know he he sees the destruction of Asgard, and you're right, and it says that it's a class seven apocalypse, and then that's when he's starting to figure things out. But if you look down, what the code name is, the code name for it is Revengers. Revengers, yes. yes. I love how they put real information on there. So if we spied it, we would be like, okay, that makes sense. Yep, and then uh, and moving on to uh, as he's doing his analogy of what's going on, the Boku juice. There, the Boku. Boku. That's the one I thought was in the other episode. It was sitting on the desk. The other episode. Too. Yeah, and then also we got another Phil Coulson stabbing stab in the back uh, moment there because you know this is where we get you literally stab like fifty people in the back, and he's like, I'm not, <laughs> I'm not, I'm not gonna stab you. Did you see somebody found footage from the other movie uh, where the blade doesn't go through him? Because yeah. they wanted to maintain the rating so kids could see it? Yes. Yes, okay. I, I've, I've actually seen both of those. That's so, cool. But, I mean, basically, this is a lot to unpack there because uh, Loki ends up uh, um, being the one who ushers in the destruction of Asgard. So that means that he's reading, like, the fact that he did this. Oh, um, but a little bit before that, and this, I know we kind of just glanced over, but as we're just ca- talking about in the office with the, uh, with the judge, we also see a helmet in there. It says a 23 helmet, which, in, which oh, in Avengers volume one, number 23. That is the first appearance of King, the conqueror. Ooh, 
Nice catch. And looking at that middle statue. Hmm, yes. Yes. Oh, I, it, I like it is, where you're going. I, I mean, I mean, what happens if the multiverse of madness is there because Loki creates it off of this series? I am kind of in agreement with you. I think that they are foobarring time itself in this series, and mm-hmm. it's going to spill into everything else. Yep. Oh, man, I love it. I hope we are correct. We've never been right before, so this will be the first time. <laughs> well, Mephisto, man. It's Mephisto. Eventually, Mephisto will be in the series, and we will be right. Dude, if he comes in the series and he's chewing kablooey gum, I will freaking flip my lid. He's like, kablooey. And I'll be like, oh, my gosh. Not what I was expecting, but thank you. Yep. Uh, Loki would never stab anybody in the back. Well, he'd never do it again. <laughs> He's literally or, stabbed everyone in the back. Or at least not to him. Not, not. Right, right. <laughs> It'll be the one time. Plus, he's probably an android, maybe. Mm-hmm. Uh, 79 AD, Pompeii, and when Loki is just acting a fool, he releases the goats. Releases the goats! And then he gives a speech, and he's like, it doesn't matter! <laughs> he was correct, though. They, d- they did not alter anything because it's ruined anyway. Yeah, no, I like his entire, you're all going to die any minute now. That's was, right. No hope for you. <laughs> he was throwing fruit and veggies at people. I was like, what is he doing, man? This dude is epic. Well, I mean, Loki, Loki the goat, and, you know, he let his horned friends go. <laughs> but not very far because they are no more. Yeah. Oh, goodness. Uh, so Loki asks about what's up with that jet ski magazine. And I feel like Loki at this point was manipulating or t- attempting to manipulate Mo- uh, Mobius. And did you get the sense that Mobius had no idea where he's truly from? I don't think anybody does. I don't think a single person. I'd ha- I This is what I believe. Okay. I don't think that they are a race because first off, you don't see any kids. You don't really see any old people. You just see people there. So I have a feeling that, you know, whenever they're talking about, oh, all the abductions and missing people on planet Earth, I believe that there is another group in the TVA that goes out and recruits, quote, quote, recruits uh, people to come and basically uh, work there. Because as far as they know, they only know the existence of the job that they're supposed to do. Right. Uh, and and they don't have any idea how they got there. They don't know like when they got there. So, um, I mean, maybe it's a time thing, uh, timey wimey, wibbly wobbly, uh, but it's, I doubt it. I, I, I think that these people are n- normal people that got ripped out of reality. I love that. That is really good. You're going to get a gold star today. Oh, okay. Finally. Yeah. <laughs> wait, so, wait, come on. Come on. No, 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 no. Where's it at? Oh, you, you got to have it right this minute. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. God. Oh, no, I'm not letting you forget my gold star. <laughs> I'm going to find this darn gold star. Where is it? There it is. Yay! Good job. Good All job. Right. Way to go. I appreciate you. That's right. I'm going to put that down. John, one <laughs> gold star so far. Okay. <laughs> uh, so... We got the three magic lizards, and then Mobius deflects and is like, well, look how strange your life it sounds. You know, you guys think you're this, that, and the other, and, and you know, listen to the where you're from and all that stuff. And I'm like, yeah, that's a good point. He made a really good point. Yep. But it was a deflection. It's kind of like a defense mechanism. And then Mobius comes up with something. There's no candy on Asgard. <laughs> what about nuts? <laughs> I mean, nuts and grapes. <laughs> you think they'd be like chocolate, right? Yes. It better be. I mean, shoot. What else, What other reason would you want to go there then? Well, I mean, clearly they don't have a coffee there considering the first Thor. You know, bring me another. <laughs> <laughs> what I found disturbing is if we get the MCU acting as the Simpsons, Alabama 2050 is going to be the next, you know, big freaking event. And now if yep. that comes true in real life, let's we'll freak out. So, let's let's take a moment here to appreciate that in a different reality that they're clear, uh, clearly dealing with, this is a, a, a Roxxon company. Rox Cart is just <laughs> Another spin for them to put to use rocks on the fictional energy corporation from the Marvel comics. Oh my gosh, dude. 
And uh, can everybody press chat or F in the chat for uh, Alabama 2050? Uh, <laughs> we'll just do that. So we are on. R- Ravana doesn't like that deal, but she's like, go ahead, take him out. And this time he's going to get knives. No, he isn't. He's going to get them taken away. <laughs> yeah, he was. I love that. He was so excited. He was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I love It's B14, correct? Our yeah, favorite. Um, no, B15, I do believe. Is she 15 or 14? Uh, oh, shoot. My TV turned off. I had it right on the screen here a moment okay. ago. I'm pretty sure it's B15 because I remember making a comparison that the other person was C20. Okay. Put it up. Put it up there when you get a chance. All right. But, um, Turn TV back on. If uh, if you see a Lohi, prune it. <laughs> I was like, that is outstanding. Oh, my goodness. That's outstanding. I kind of like it. So, Roxcart Lohi uses magic to dry his clothes. I thought something else transpired there. Did you? No. I, I, I knew exactly what he was doing there because, I mean, he looked all fresh with popped collar afterwards. So, what he should have done if- was he should have went and did everybody else because I'm pretty sure he could do that as well. What if that's a misdirect though, and he did duplicate himself? B, she is B fifteen. She is B fifteen. I apologize for saying fourteen. Um, what if he? What if he duplicated himself right there? Um, he, sometimes when he duplicates himself, even when he does that, he tends to still be there. Okay. Because I mean, look at the last. Look at uh, um um Coulson R- Ragnarok. Like he he stabbed. Um, uh, you know, he goes to lead uh, uh Thor down some path, but then he breaks off from himself and goes somewhere else. So that's his duplicating magic, and uh, it it's just one of those. He was still there. He just walked off. So I mean, I'm not saying it's not possible, but I actually think that that's not the direction this Loki's going. I have a okay. feeling that because of the fact that they've pruned so many Lokis that. He just wants to exist, and yes, we do find out later on that he has an overall plan because he wants to take over all the TVA. Because why not? It's Loki. But yeah. any, but anyway, I, I actually feel that you know he's going to try and do what he can to work the good grace with them, and that could be his glorious purpose. <laughs> so, uh, if you want to get your own glorious purpose Loki themed shirt, you can head to tpenetwork.com and click the store link. Right on the website, we also have TPE Network t-shirts that are actually selling really well right now. So uh, you can sport TPE Network gear, and they go on sale quite often. So check it out, tpenetwork.com. And we also have a Patreon if uh, there's anyone out there that would like to help help us with that as well. I'm glad you said that. And I changed the tiers, so now they kind of duplicate us. So it's like the uh, what's his name, what's that character's name tier, kind of inspired (laughs) by John, and then everything's awesome tier and (laughs) proficient 8 out of 10 tier and all that kind of stuff. We're just having fun with it. So we would love it if you would support independent content creation. Oh, did Uncle Alex Soapbox make it in there? (laughs) I think it did. Oh, yes. Good. We'll we'll see. (laughs) We'll see. (laughs) I, I can't remember clearly. He's got one on there, though. Um, let's see. Uh, do, do, do. All right, we're wandering around the uh, the rock oh, con uh, they, location. They, they argue over him and Mobius teaming up. Did you find something suspicious right there? No. Why did you? What, what did you catch? Because why would it matter who he's paired with? Um, it was, it was almost like Lady Loki was manipulating things from the start uh I, I mean it's possible but i mean i can also see that since it's her like like she said before it's her operation so because it's her operation she wants to make sure she knows where the variant is all the time because regardless of the fact that um the judge already said that if something happens it's all on him and there's nothing she could do <laughs> clearly something is going to happen to the lead to the entire mission in the first place so i uh, maybe that there was something working there i could totally see that and i am not discounting you whatsoever but i also have a feeling is she's the boss she's in charge and she wants to know where her her uh, target is all the time oh, okay. because you know, the last thing that she wants to do is have to worry about chasing him all over again, <laughs> which would be an, uh, it would be a, a hilarious episode all in its own. Yeah. All right. So uh, Lady Loki sets a charge 
and kind of gets the clock running on us here. And then we find some random dude chopping in a hurricane. And he's like, yeah, I want to get these hurricane sails. <laughs> I was like, that doesn't make sense, but okay. Oh, wait, wait, and, wait. What about the guy that was down in the rescue where he's like, do you guys have a chopper? We need to get out of here now. You're like, right. it's a hur hurricane, man. Chopper. What are you talking about? Right. right. That was ridiculous. Yeah. And, and that uh, one TBA agent was all rude to him. I was like, man, that ain't cool. Oh, and they're just shuffling through people's stuff, just tossing stuff out. And they're like, hey, 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 hey. these people are about to. And he's like, these people are about to die. I don't care. <laughs> like, wow. I was like, uh, too soon? Yeah, okay. seriously. Hey, why don't you announce that to everybody? <laughs> right. And they were all like, what? Um, so we see that same green color. And I thought it was coming out of the, you know, I thought it was the guy, but it's actually Lady Loki manipulating him from a distance. Yep, it would be her uh, essence control from, from uh, point to point. It, that sounds more like Enchantress than Lady Loki. It's interesting you say that because we might have to have a, uh, a conversation in the uh, spoiler zone afterwards. Ooh, I love the spoiler zone. All right, so... I love the interaction with B-15 and Loki when you know, B-15's you're overtaken and is like, I'm the real one. You're the duplicate. <laughs> you mean, oh, you mean with Loki versus Loki where they're talking? Uh, yes. Or you're, you, you are a mere copy of myself or something like that. Yeah. I was just like, I'm like trying to wrap my head around that. I'm like, what? Oh. <laughs> and that smile they do at each other was perfect. And I, and I love that he's like drops the line. He's like, I'm going to try and take over. You're like, of course he's trying to take over. But clearly, you know, that's not what this lo other Loki wants to do. This other Loki no. has a bigger plan. Yes. They find C20. And uh, Loki makes that comment about enchantment is cowardly. I was like, ooh, okay. Then the variant jumps bodies. And you can call that variant Randy. On that digital name badge, mm -hmm. <laughs> which I want one of those, by the way. Um, Loki tries to make a deal, but because of course he would, and he's like, "Yeah, let's overthrow the timekeepers," like you said. But, but like you said, this Loki is not interested at all. Nope. Why is C twenty saying it was real? Is this going to be something to do with the reveal of the timekeepers? Um, I, I, yeah, I have no idea. I mean, being as com comatose or as, as she is, I, I have no clue what, what all is going on with that. I was extremely curious and kind of upset that they didn't progress that anymore besides just giving us that carrot. Right. Just or here. Dang or sorry, dangling the carrot. Well, whatever. Um, <laughs> so C20 told the other variant how to find the timekeepers. But how would they, how would C20, do they mean just the TVA? I I mean, clearly the timekeepers are kept somewhere, and, and then a lot... Uh, I mean, she's security, and she's actually one of the, the head security people for, for a group, so I I mean, I don't know why it wouldn't be information that she shouldn't... she would have or wouldn't have. I mean, it would kind of make sense. I mean, there's probably a lot more that you need to know to get to them, and she just knows where they're at, but I mean, I, it's, it's... until we figure out exactly what uh, happened to her, then this is... I, I don't even really want to give a good speculation because it's just too many things could be going on here. I absolutely love when Lady Lohi transfers into the big, the big dude and Lohi's like, I miss Randy. <laughs> <laughs> and he has, he has the robot dogs. And, and then when he summons the power of uh, not Milnir, but uh, shop vac or whatever that little vacuum is. <laughs> uh, oh no. The, the uh, um, Oh my gosh. Roomba. Roomba, thank you. And it did you see that when they zoomed in on it, it said he whoever possesses the Roomba possesses the power. Of, no, I'm just kidding. Of cleaning, <laughs> okay. and so he he was trying to clean house. Then he was literally literally trying to clean house. Oh nice. my gosh! Oh, that's awesome. Oh, but that was a lot of fun. I, I love that I, exchange. I had an, a, a slight issue with this because, like, this guy, yeah, he's a big dude, but he's beating the bejesus out of Loki now. Are we saying that when Lady Loki can tr transfers her uh, uh, essence into another person, that the strength goes along with them? Because Ooh. yes, I do realize that uh, you know basically anyone who's not a human ha is stronger than us. But you know Loki should be able to stand up to a punch from even a big Earthling because yeah, he's 
Yeah. So I, I that kind of like threw me off a little bit. Now, now he did pick him up and throw him, which makes me believe that yeah, it was infused with some some Loki strength. But that would have been nice for them to you know let us know that because yep. it almost made it seem like you know like what what's going on with our Loki here? Why can't he stand up to this person? I've said that before on other stuff because. Remember when Lady Sif showed up on Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. and she kicked that bus and it like spun and went, you know, a good ways. And yep. we we're like, yeah, there it is. That's that power. That's what they're supposed to be more powerful. Yep. But it, it, I, I'm glad you brought that up. I'm giving you another star. Oh, oh, I got to write that one down, too. <laughs> all right. All right. Two another star. Stars. Man, no, I don't know if you've ever gotten three. Uh, yeah. Maybe you'll give me a third one at uh, um, uh, the spoiler zone. The, yeah, the spoiler yeah. zone. Loki meets Lady Loki, and then all the charges start to disappear and head to the sacred timeline. All right. This is where I, I'm going to jump in now. So we, we, I haven't named the planets yet. Are we got to wait till the name of the planets or no? Yeah, yeah, good. That's fine. That's okay. fine. Uh, Loki ends up following her into that portal as Mobius approaches. Ravana grabs her weapon, and we see that A23 helmet. So we see Vormir. That's where the Soul Stone was. But the years are wrong. Like, the years aren't matching up to our particular events that we wanted. Um, yeah, but, I mean, but if, if there's no Volmir, or say, for example, maybe that whatever that date is, is the first time that the Red Skull actually shows up. That's a great one. Uh, Asgard, Sakaar, Ego, Titan, and we're talking Thanos, New York, Hala, the Kree home world, Xandar, the Nova Corps. There was real life events as well in there, too. Uh, you know, like real places on Earth. Uh, so that's a lot of stuff there, John. Yep. It, I don't know. Uh, so go ahead. So, so okay, so there's also Kingsport that's in there, and that is actually a HP Lovecraft uh, um, uh, thing. <laughs> and I'm a huge HP Lovecraft fan, so yep, that stood stood out to me. Oh uh, yeah. What else? Anything? No, I, you know you you've covered the only other one that that you missed would have been Hala, but that that's it. You, it you was got on, everything. I else. said it. Oh, you said all. Then never mind. Yep. Then you got everything. Cree world. Cree home world. So there could be some huge ramifications here. This is going to be crazy. And he has just messed up the entire MCU going forward pretty much. Ah, oh, there's an F in the chat. Oh, I love that. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to I'm trying to I'm trying to win again. <laughs> I mean, if I'm the only one playing the game now, I win automatically, correct? <laughs> pretty much. Yes. <laughs> yes. Now, ratings time there, John? Now, you go first because you're going to be yelling at me. So <laughs> I will probably yell at you. Now, <laughs> I, I did love this episode. This episode is amazing. It was funny. It was intriguing. We get the Lady Loki reveal so we can stop pretending like we didn't know who was under the hood. Um, and it, there was a lot that transpired on here. I hate to do it. I hate to say it. I'm giving it a 10. Yeah! What you giving this one? I'm giving this one like a 15. <laughs> but but if you're not going to let me do a 15, no. and I got to scale back because <laughs> what you everyone here doesn't know is I t I messaged Hank right after watching being like, I, I this is above a 10. He's like, you gave the last one a 10. You can't give this one a 10 or say it's higher than a 10 if you give the last <laughs> one a 10. So fine, I'll drop the, the, uh, the first episode down to a 9.8. <laughs> and I'll make this one a 10. And then next week, he's going to drop this one down to a 9.8. 9. 9. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. This is epic. Yeah. Tens, <laughs> tens for this one. It's amazing. I mean, this is what everybody wanted. You've got uh, Tom Hiddleston doing what he, one of the things he does best is, and just, and it doesn't matter. He could be doing nothing and everyone would enjoy just watching him be him. And now yes. for putting him in, in a situation where he has to basically fight for his existence, but then he's fighting against him, himself for existence. It, you know, it, it comedy ensues. You just nonstop. <laughs> I can't wait to see all the chaos this caused. Oh, great. Tens all around. We got two pieces of feedback. Then we're going to go into the spoiler zone. Okay. The first one is from Elizabeth. Hi, Hank and John. There was too much talking and too little action in this episode. 
it's a good thing Loki and Mobius have great chemistry. Mobius is great at not answering yes or no questions. He didn't actually say there was an option of Loki meeting the timekeepers, but how else do you keep a trickster in line? At the very least, the timekeepers should have given their staff push-button phones in case of an emergency. They didn't have those in the 70s. <laughs> I'm looking forward to hearing from you about what I missed, Elizabeth. Elizabeth, I hope we have done our jobs well. And we hey, are happy to hear from you. Now, Elizabeth, I will point out that you are watching a Loki show. So if you're not expecting a lot of talking from him, then then I you, you picked the wrong show. Because, I mean, you're right. He does do a lot of great battle scenes, but Loki is known for talking. He is. You know, you know talk, 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 talk. They should have sent oh, him. Doctor oh. Doctor Strange could have sent him for to Dormammu. Oh wait, wait! There is that line I totally forgot when they're walking by, and he's like, "Man, he's like, what happened to the I don't talk much Loki that's in the elevator? Why can't I have him back?" <laughs> yes, yes. Oh, that's great! Thank you, Elizabeth. Yes, thank you. We have one more email, and this is from Giovanni from Italy. Ah, uh, Giovanni! Wow, what a beautiful second episode. Starting with the many hilarious moments that I need a hero fight song. Maybe a song addressed to Loki? Will he become a real hero? The Loki variants with the Loki bike champion and, of course, Loki that speaks Latin. Being an Italian and having studied Latin at school, I could not believe that he spoke very correctly. So that is awesome. We have somebody that can prove that Tom Hiddleston nailed it. Uh, Giovanni goes on to say, why does Mobius say TVA is real because I believe it is? Why does he say that existence is all chaos, but at the same time he works for a universe that is all is all order and rationality? Ooh. I well, I mean, and also uh, remember what I said is that I'm pretty sure these people are plucked and then basically implanted. So, of course, he would say that. That's all he knows to say. Whenever yeah. he automatically has a recollection back to that, it just that's what pops up. Listen to me. I'm nodding along and saying, yep, like it's fact and we are just guessing. <laughs> I, I mean, I think that we might be pretty, uh, uh, pretty on. I mean, yes. Um, um, WandaVision was all over the place. We were all over the place because, I mean, it, they were, first off, that was the first time that they're doing, like, with these series. Secondly, they picked a really strange story to start the whole thing off. And then on top of that, they were, I mean, we're talking about throw us all for loops. I mean, again, Mephisto was not the bad guy. We will see him at some point in time. But, um, you know, I, I should get, like, a quarter every time I say Mephisto on, on the show here. You know, Mephisto, yeah. Mephisto, Mephisto, Mephisto. There's a dollar right there. Um <laughs> But but yeah, it's th this one. I'm not saying it's predictable because here's what they could be doing. They could be making it extremely predictable looking. So when we get to the end and it's completely not what we thought it was, it's going to be that shocking. Or it is this predictable because we need to see how things are supposed to end up. But I mean, clearly it's Loki. We've seen enough of Loki to understand how Loki's going to act and how things are going to go. I agree with you. How is it possible that he never saw the timekeepers? Do they really exist? I'm starting to think that the TVA itself may not be so r real as we think. The 70s like atmosphere is very cool, but how is it possible that they have the technology to control the universe and must do all the research on paper? <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty good. What is the meaning of the line of Mobius about the perfect design of the 90s? Oh, shall I take that as the old elder statesman, John? Um, no, you because wanna, I, I, you want to no. crack at that? No, no, no. I agree with him. No, he <laughs> wants to know what it what it Giovanni wants to, us to explain that. Oh, uh, what? Why the 90s were the best? Yes. You want well, me to I go? Mean, because of all the development and changes with music and then basically all the lifestyles and then, you know, it's... it's no. It's, oh, okay. That stuff's you true. Have? That stuff's true. But it was where style, you almost had still like the muscle type cars and the power car, powerful vehicles and stuff, but you were advancing technology. So that's what he means by when, you know, there was that 
great moment in time where form and function and stuff all kind of coalesce right there in the 90s, man. You had some cool cars back then. Mm -hmm. And uh, I will go back and get some when I become super rich from my podcast empire. Well, when you start working for the TVA and then, you know, you could just go back there and do that and, and, and keep it in a glass shelf somewhere because you're not supposed to have that paraphernalia. <laughs> I will, too. I will be pruning timelines like you wouldn't believe. <laughs> uh, also, many philosophical moments, if you think of it. A variant is everyone that does something not in line with the global mainstream way of thinking. It was also an example of someone arriving late to work. I'm so glad they brought that up. Uh, remember that one? Mm-hmm. And late you said that, that you said that would be you. <laughs> that would be me. <laughs> I'd be like, oh, look at these, look at the mess you made of this timeline. <laughs> My bad. You see how many times we've had to reset this just because you can't get to work on time? <laughs> Oh, could you imagine the TVA? Oh man, they probably like forget him. Just yeah, they're like, whole oh, it's, line. Well, it's four o'clock. Hank's supposed to go to work now, so uh, <laughs> let's go check in and see if we have got to reset that thing yet. <laughs> and that's why they at the end of the scene they were resetting all my late to works. Yep. And have you noticed that Loki appears more and more like a kid, but very smart and powerful? Yeah, he like a in Pompeii, he was like a little kid in a candy store. Well, yeah, because he got to prove everyone that he was right. I mean, yeah. to, just like they said the show, that's the one thing Loki likes to do the most is prove people he's right. <laughs> and stall. Yep. And what about the scene about the apocalypses of the near future? Truly a message to all of us? Yikes. I hope not. Please don't be the Simpsons. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> and have you seen the city Hala, the Cree, you know, Cree on the screen with the red lines? Yes, we did. We talked about that a little bit and... Oh, that's going to be a mess. Maybe that's where we get the Marvels Ooh. instead of Miss Marvel. Oh, I'm on to something. All right. Thanks, uh, Giovanni. One final thing. He says, finally, what the computer teacher says in the first scene about the collapse of all timelines. I got to do her voice. Uh, <laughs> this is a really Secret Wars, the best Marvel comics ever. That John spoke about last time. Uh, maybe the final goal of phase four and also maybe five and six will be secret wars in the MCU. Thank well, you. And that's Giovanni. They need to uh, bring the mutants into it because they need to have Molecular Man and, uh, and uh, oh, shoot. I forgot who the other person was at that <laughs> Doom news. But they also need Doom, too. And they don't have and they have Doom. So, uh, but it's, it's yeah, it's. I, I I see that going on too, but I do agree that it's definitely going to have to be like on the back end of things because okay. you need to set up a lot more stuff to be able to do that. But they're starting to. I mean, you got to look how long it took to get to Secret Invasion. Well, I mean, again, and I <laughs> and whenever we saw Th when Thor came out, I remember going over to my friend's house, and being like, "It's they're going to do the Infinity Gauntlet series," and she's like, "It's too complicated to explain and not enough time." Uh, look what they did <laughs> so and the thing is the infinity saga was written back in the 80s so like um something like uh, uh the war worlds that were going on with the um um uh oh shoot that storyline well we just said what it was and i just dropped out of my head uh, uh secret yeah. secret war sorry and a secret war storyline that's actually i think that was like er, er, mid 2000s i do believe so it's there's there's a lot more going on in that Hey, Miss Minutes is Tara Strong. Did you yeah. think it was? Okay. Yep. She does Ahsoka as well? Yep. Not Ashley Eckstein? Oh, Tara's Ashley. Oh, no, no, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Sorry. I got those two right. mixed up. No worries. Oh, sorry, everybody. No biggie. Hold on. What else? I just started thinking do? about it. I was like, well, wait a minute. <laughs> Hold on. Then I, then I got to see what other things that she's been in that I, uh, I mean, because she's been in like everything. She's in Teen Titans Go!, uh, My Little Pony, uh, do, 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 American Dad. I mean, I'm skipping over a bunch of stuff, everybody. So, I mean, Ben 10. Uh, oh, Woody, yeah. Woody, Woody Woodpecker. Familiar. She's been on, she's been in all kinds of stuff. All since, kinds of stuff. Since you got that one wrong, does that nullify a star? Oh. Sorry. All right. Are you ready to go to the spoiler zone? I don't know now. <laughs> Yes, let's go. Let's go. 
Okay. Uh, gang, if you're not joining us in the spoiler zone, we appreciate your time. We love hearing from you, and we are, thank you for tuning in. But we're heading behind the cor- cor- yeah, We're heading behind the curtain, and you've been warned. All right. All right. So I found this, and this is from ScreenRant.com. Okay. Uh, I might as well just read it out of here because it's going to make more sense uh, than me trying to piecemeal together. So here's what, here we go. Marvel fans know to stick around during the credits, but if Loki is anything to go by, they should also be reading the foreign credits. As the name ru- names run by, Lady Loki is actually listed as Sylvie on one of the cast lists. This could allude toward Marvel Comics' Sylvie the Enchantress, who took the title after Loki himself imbued her with the uh, powers. Going by the full name uh, uh, Sylvie Lushton, uh, this Earth teenager bears little resemblance to Sophia Di Martino's Lady Loki, but until her origin story is revealed, it's impossible to rule out a connection. Adding further weight to the theory, Lo- Loki across uh, came. Yeah, Loki comes across a file for Sylvie. Um, that with that person during his library study session, potentially giving us the proper name of the uh, enigmatic female variant. And I, this is one of the things that I did have a rub in this. Okay. I've seen the lady Loki comics. She doesn't look anything like how they portrayed lady Loki in the lady Loki comics. I mean, uh-huh. first off one of the, the lady Loki uh, or sorry, it's just a Loki characteristic is the greasy black hair and right. lady Loki has black hair as well. I mean, it and all around, it's just a, you know, really uh, uh, in, <laughs> well endowed uh, um, a woman because it's Loki and she, and he can look however the way he wants to look, but he likes to keep his, you know, some of the things subtle, such as his black hair. And with her being blonde and having it short, I was like, I, I, I it's really threw me off. So I think that it, this is a possibility. And this might be one of the other reasons why, for one, we don't have a picture of her whenever I was like, where's the picture? Two, why she's doing all this weird stuff in the first place. Three, why she doesn't jump on board Loki's plan because she's not Loki and doesn't and has a completely different plan. Uh-huh. And it's and let me see. Yeah. And then four, why uh, they are having such a rough time trying to predict her moves, because if this isn't the same Loki, I mean, this isn't Loki, then Loki's not thinking like how Loki would. So he did find the loophole about hiding, but that's a loophole that was basically the entire system is messed up with. Uh, Not necessarily something that Loki, you know, would have found out, but it's. I, it is completely possible that we're that this could be the enchantress, uh, not uh, a lady Loki. He's getting another star. Yay! But it's not three. Boo! Oh, I get applause too. Ooh! I think you just blown this thing wide open, man. I th- I do. I think this is going to be proven correct, and you will have redeemed yourself from. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> we'll all forget about he who shall never be named again. Yep. Because <laughs> the writer was even like, who? <laughs> but all right, John, anything else before we cl- call this to a close? We've run a little long this week. Yeah, no, I don't have anything else. Okay. Thank you so much, John. This was all my yep. last. And thank you, you for tuning in to TPE Network Fun Yet Informative Podcast. For John, I'm Hank. Until the next time, we're signing off. See you, everybody. TPE Network. There ain't nothing else like it.